Okay, good morning. Uh, my name's Ali Hind. I'm the Principal Teacher of Technology at Mintlaw Academy. I've got Wallace, Henderson and Charlotte Firth with me who are two six-year pupils. What, when we embarked on this journey, when Alison first contacted us, we suddenly realised that we were actually completing an awful lot of community resilience and it was embedded within our curriculum and with what we did as a school. The only difference being was the fact that we didn't actually call it community resilience. And this is a very small snapshot of some of the things we do, bearing in mind that we've got, this is for looking at what we do from a STEM side, but when we look further through modern languages, English, we discover there's a whole wealth of it happening around the school. We do, we really, within STEM, we focus on our transition phases. We really, we aim, we're different from other schools where we start transition to secondary from primary six. We've got 11 feeder primary schools, so you can imagine we've got some kids that are working with two or three in a class all the way right up to 30 in some of our schools. So we start them early with a business in a box, enterprise activity, right through to a STEM activity, primary seven, through what the other departments do, uh, with it be drama, PE, they come up for, they're up for a lot of days throughout the whole sort of two year period. Once they're in the school, we, we continue the process of the transition. We do an S1 flooding day where we really focus on some of our communities uh, within our area will flood. So we focus on what the impact is for that. We looked at how they can change, looking at rerouting rivers, how they could possibly look at flood defences and what the impact is for some of our members of our community. As the kids go through the school, uh, we start looking at this, the developing young workforce. This is something that we feel quite passionate about. Uh, it's about preparing pupils for going out into that big bad world. Uh, recently been recognised with an award for what, we've, what we do with that from industry side. But we link with several companies and we run an, a thing called the Community Cafe, our Happy Cafe Community Engagement. I'll run through just some of these. This one here, some of our pictures from our primary six, primary seven transition events. It's all about breaking barriers. It's all about fun. It's about bringing this, this you know, 10, 11 year old little boy or girl who's coming from a primary school with, you know, maybe one or two friends within their class and bring them up and put them in a room full of 80, 90 people. And all of a sudden the noise level goes through the roof. Uh, you can imagine that the activities are slightly different. So we just try and develop ways to break barriers. As a very, probably the same as Logie, We've got different coloured jumpers for diff in terms of the primary school, so you can see there how it, it is all about mixing pupils as far as we possibly can. This is looking at our flood defences. We've got, we did some activities. The top left hand picture there is looking at how can we build a structure that can float in water and they've only got balloons, straws and cardboard. We then went on the top right there, we're looking at, we actually modelled one of our rivers. We've got two sand trays built, so we actually modelled and they were able to look at where the flood defences go we put the water down it, they played with sand, and they actually looked to see exactly how the process should work. The bottom left, our science department were heavily involved in the day as well, and scientists who like to carry out experiments and, and actually have facts and figures <coughs> down on top, they actually then went through the process of, well, how does actually water work? What about water pressure? So we pulled in the maths and the science element to that as well. As I said, as we go through it, the transition to the world of work is, is something that we are a, we're very much based a rural community, a farming based community that's that's in the heart of the North East in terms of oil and gas uh, and renewables. So we try to encourage our pupils to have this wider mindset in terms of the opportunities available within uh, the energy sector. We've got numerous uh, partners that we work with on a regular basis. This week is our celebration of engineering week. So we've got events happening all week, which are there to celebrate what we do in our community and encourage our pupils to take part. You can see there we've got a wealth of partners and that's probably, that is probably one of our strengths is we, we, we rely on lots of different companies and organisations to support what we do to develop our, the DYW programme that we offer. And last but not least, every Tuesday, uh, we've got our very successful Happy Cafe, very similar to you guys, what you do. Uh, we've got pupils who will bake and make lots of interesting, it's, some of the stuff's really, really good that they do and they're starting to experiment with flavours and things like that, exactly the same as what you guys are doing. And this is something that's grown. Uh, as you can see there, we've got members of the community coming every week. Sometimes it's standing room only, so it is a popular. So it's this idea that we're embracing community resilience within the curriculum, but equally, we're embracing community resilience within the community. What I'll do is I'll hand you over to Charlotte and she'll speak about her experiences. Hi. Mr. Hine was mentioning the transitions for the earlier pupils. My brother moved up. Um, it must have been last year anyway he moved up and he went through all these little transition workshops so I came in one time and saw him standing at the flood day standing with Mr Hind over a tray of water going look Charlotte I flooded your house I flooded your house 
I was very confused for a while. But it's this in, this workshop really hit close to home because our house is in the middle of a flood zone. So this is really relevant to and meaningful to me individually as well. Um, it was good to see this school tackling with a local issue. Um, I got the opportunity through the school to do a workshop thing called World Challenge, where for almost a month we go away to a third world sort of country and go on a trek and do some volunteering and then we have a little bit of relaxation time at the end. You can see some of my pictures, the big one from China. So I went to Mongolia and I were walking and walking. It was the most physically grueling thing of my life. I am not a sporty person. But this really built my resilience and it was a massive culture shock because I'd gone completely across, I'd gone to the other side of the world with just, um, there were about 20 of us. So it was a really strange and bizarre just to see how people actually, how societies sort of work on the other side of the world. And it was, it showed me that I could survive in the face of adversity and challenges. Um, I also got the opportunity through the school, specifically the science department, to go to the Strathclyde Space School, which is a workshop that works in cooperation with NASA. It's an amazing opportunity and I was completely put out of my comfort zone once again because I was the only person from the school who got to go and there were about a hundred children fr from all over the country going there and it was we were given workshops about science and technology and engineering and going, this is the applications of what you've been learning and how it can go into industries like the space industry, which really helped me just, it helped me decide what I wanted to do with my future. And because I was there without any of my sort of friends with me or anything, it really helped me improve my confidence because I'm not really a sociable person. I've got like eight friends and <laughs> <laughs> I came away having made ten <laughs> I came away having made loads of new friends from space school, which really shocked most of my friends from back home that it really helped me improve my confidence in unfamiliar situations and that I can actually do things on my own. I'm gonna pass you on to Wallace now. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Wallace. Um I'm going to talk a bit about how uh, out where we stay, we stay right out in the sticks. I actually stay further than a lot. I stay in Narnia, I like to say. <laughs> um, uh, I got the opportunity through school to do lots of different work experience. In S4, I did. I got a week in a surgical practice in Aberdeen, and that was new for me. And lots of other people did different things as well. Um, so I got to do that because I want to go in and do medicine, and that's fantastic for applications and stuff like that. Um, it was great to see a professional work environment and things as well. Uh, I also got to do the Doctors at Work programme, which um, is organised through Aberdeen University to reach schools, which is one of our schools because we stay out in the sticks, like I said. Um, and that was really good because it was working with consultants and um, th we got uh, presentations from different people who uh, told us what it's like to be a doctor. Uh, through the school as well, we have this wider achievement programme for S5 and S6 pupils. Um, last year, when I was in S5, I picked Duke Van Brasso to Charlotte, and uh, we did our silver award, us goofy faces um, <laughs> on our expedition, it was great fun. That was fantastic, because we really got to, it pushed us out of our comfort zone, like uh, Charlotte said, for Mongolia, because I didn't do Mongolia, I'm not that extravagant, <laughs> but it was fantastic, yeah, and um, as well as that, with my volunteering section from um, Duke of Edinburgh, I do, <laughs> why am I stuttering? <laughs> I do um, volunteering at a kayaking club. I've been kayaking for about eight years now, but I've been coaching for about two and a half. And uh, that's part of my Duke of Edinburgh that, to work it, towards it. And that's phenomenal, again, for the future. I'm learning all these new skills to um, teaching, communication, all that. And it's, it's really, really fantastic. Um, as well, I'm pretty sure what opportunities I think that's referring to in school, prefect wise. Uh, I'm deputy head girl. Um, the application for that, w uh, the process which I went through, that was really interesting as well because that was the first time I ever had like a proper stressful interview. <laughs> um, and that was great to learn from that because obviously I'm going to have interviews down the line. And yeah, the school really, really has set me up 
pretty well so far. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just, uh, just to sum up, as you can see, what, what we try to do, it's, it's, it's about initially the transition phases, about making the children feel comfortable when they come into school and preparing them for that step. But then when they get to this age here, it's how can we challenge them? How can we put them outside their comfort zone? How can we prepare them for the next step in their lives, whether it be apprenticeship, university, college, or in the world of work? So it, we're, this is it's a very much a very quick process, what we've looked at today, but the whole process is aimed at preparing them to come in and exit between S1 and S4, 5 and 6. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Well done. Okay, a question for Charlotte and Wallace. Some of the resilience activities that you've done in school over the years, do you think it's impacted on your career choices and what you want to do after you leave school? Definitely. And um, there's been a lot of engineering focused days and I actually really want to go into engineering, so this has definitely sort of steered me towards a career which I think I'll do pretty well in. Yeah, I'm the same. Um when we did the rapid response in first year, that was the first time I ever thought about um healthcare a little bit because um, we did the triage sort of thing and that got me a little bit interested because I used to want to be an engineer <laughs> randomly and that you know started something and now I really want to go do that so yeah. <laughs>